to a database MySQL server that is running on uh, AWS on an AWS instance, right? So just working with what we have currently, probably you might be having firewalls and everything uh, in a proper AWS environment, then it might not work that easily. But working with what we have currently, for example, you just want to use your MySQL workbench to easily interact with your databases without using this terminal, then you can try the following that I'm about, I'm about to do. Click on a new collection, connection, and then the connection method, you select uh, over SSH. I believe that you know all this. And then on the host name, you go to your instances. You go to your instances, you select the server that has the MySQL database. You select that server. You copy, instead of the IP address, copy the public DNS. You copy that one. And that becomes the host, the host name here, the SSH host name. You paste it like so. And then for the user, simply like what you've seen on our terminal, the user, um, most of it, the user that was, um, the user is Ubuntu, or rather the easiest way you can do it after selecting your, your server, you click on connect. If you say connect, you then click on EC2 instance connect via the browser. Then you select on this one. It's going to give you the user. This is the user that we want. You simply copy it, then close, then go back to your MySQL workbench, then replace the SSH user if you're, not, if you're not sure of that SSH user. Then for the password, you simply need to um, look for your key file, the one that we generated earlier when we created our instances so i'm going to click on this one and then you recovery i know where i put that and then for the local host currently let's leave it like this the same port that is assuming if you haven't changed the port the root this is the user that we just created and uh granted all the access right remember i created yui and you created somebody else and then store the password in a vault you click on that button store password in the vault and then you put our lozked89 the logged 89 password that we use and then click on ok and then if you try to test you can test but it's not going to give you any response because um of the current aws setup that we have so it might act like this and then not give you any success method message so after that just give it a name a connection name don't forget about that my aws db db con like so um and then click on okay after that if you double click or just single click it's gonna try to connect and trust me if you followed my steps, it's going to connect and it's going to take some time because of our current setup of the AWS environment. We're not doing it properly. Uh, we have to take into consideration a number of things, but this is not part of the tutorial. I just want to show you how you can connect. So as you can see, this is how you can connect MySQL Workbench to your uh, MySQL database hosted on AWS EC2 instance. To make the process a lot faster, I use MySQL Workbench and I created my database. I created a database called MyAWSDB, so I'm going to say I use MyAWSDB. So this is now pretty much the same as what you've been seeing from our previous tutorial. And then um, to clear the screen, um, simply punch in uh, the combination key, control L, you can clear your screen, right? So now we have our data in our MySQL database. What is left is for us to connect uh, to connect that to superset server 
and now we want to focus now on our superset server so the next thing you're gonna need to do is to log in to ssh ssh into your superset server using your favorite terminal and then start following the instruction on the superset so go on to google type apache superset open up the superset.incubator.apache.org and then after it's low after it loads click on installation and configuration and then we are not going to be focusing on cloud native again not on docker we're just going to be focusing on operating system dependencies going below right so on the right we need to log into our superset server Now that we are logged in, one of the first things that you can do, just to check the Python version, is this, this this command, and then you're going to see that we have Python 3.6.9. Um, it works well. Going back to our installation page, scroll down to the OS dependencies, and then you're going to see that we have certain dependencies like cryptography that is required for the password uh, encryption and decryption process right and since i've chosen ubuntu 18.04 you're gonna have to skip this part and then go straight to this part that says ubuntu 18.04 right copy this part then let it install now it's done installing we can do things like checking the pip version you know won't be successful and then this part is for those using fedora and red hat and then this part is for mac os and then this part is for windows now the next thing is the creation of a virtual environment and then to create a virtual environment you're gonna have to do this or you can do this right since python 3 like what they said already ships with uh virtual env they mentioned it yeah so you can uh you can go ahead and create this copy that part go to your terminal let me clear it so that i can show you what i'm talking about so the first part is it's the built-in command that tells python to create a virtual environment and then the second part is the name of your virtual environment so i'm going to maintain this name dev zone and then it's going to fail because of certain we, we didn't install python 3 env so i guess we're gonna have to use pip if you experience the same issue you're gonna have to use pip it's still the same So now, after installing our uh, virtual environment, pip install vnv using this command right here. So you're gonna see that uh, this mostly is related to Python uh, 2.7. So I would always recommend that you use this command right here. So it's it's pretty much straightforward. If you go on a first any problems, just do a sudo app get install so just like what we did here and then we try to create our uh, um, virtual environment if you get this error then you're gonna ha you simply have to install this part so i guess let, let let us just install it but then you're gonna have to install it 
okay sudo upget install that and then after it installs you're gonna be able to then create your virtual environment using python 3 right i prefer you always working with python 3 like this one and then after that it's going to create now we don't have uh, any issues so if you list your files we're gonna have this tab zone right so now the next thing is we need to activate our our virtual environment but before we do that we can also just cross check with any of the steps that follow so yeah updating pip copy that command just in case so before activating our virtual environment let's update our pip if there is anything to update and then we do pip version we're still on 20.02 okay uh the next thing now is we need to activate our virtual environment so before you start installation of superset you need to activate your virtual environment so since after listing our virtual environment is dev zone i am going to assume that you know how the virtual environments work so now i'm simply going to say source um dev zone being activate so just to show you that we have activated our virtual environment successfully you're going to see that we are now working with this prefix here in the in our brackets in the brackets now it's showing that this is a virtual environment i'm going to assume that you also know what that is so whatever we install here whatever module that we install here it's not going to conflict with what is already on the ec2 instance whatever python module rather so if we do something like pip freeze pip freeze it gives us sort of like a list of all the uh, modules that have been installed currently we can also use pip list so if you say pip list it comes in in a bit ordered um this error we get it yeah so the best thing would be uh, i'm not going to address that i addressed that i think in my previous video so this error you can just use pip freeze instead of pip list and then you get uh all your current packages after that let's carry on to install our superset And I need you to remember that you should not use sudo, okay? Because if you use sudo, you're gonna be punished later on. Uh, if you try to upload a, a CSV file, for example, you want to work on a CSV data, uh, that is, you want to visualize it, for example. And then if you try to upload it, you will not be able to upload uh, since after since you will have created your superset with uh, root privilege privileges so do not use sudo here simply run the command exactly as they say it on the website so let's start our installation and i'll pause it uh until it finishes installing or until i made an error so during the installation process i came across uh certain errors like this one uh there are a number of them but i'm not so sure if they're going to affect their performance so we'll carry on from this point and then see if there are any replications later on remember this tutorial I told you that i'm going to leave everything as it is uh for the purpose of our learning so the next thing you need to do is to upgrade your database so what you're gonna have to do is superset but now that if i type super s then press tab it's auto completing so i'm i'm assuming that it has installed superset successfully so superset up the upgrade db that's the next command that you have to launch 
and let it run. After that, you then follow um, the export of the flask, flask app uh, variable. You do export. Let me clear the screen. And then the next one, Flask App Builder, Flask, Flask App Builder, and then create the admin. Create iPhone admin. 